Hello, everyone, and thanks for watching this presentation. I'm Alessandro Margara, professor at Politecnico di Milano, and I will present you uh, how we solve the DEVS uh, 2022 grand challenge using NOIR, which is a data processing platform we developed at Politecnico. NOIR and the results I present come from the work of Luca De Martini and many other students uh, before him under the supervision of Professor Kugel and myself. So first, let me quickly recall uh, the grand challenge problem. Teams were given a real world data set with millions of trading events coming from major exchanges. Um, and each event includes uh, a symbol, a price, and a timestamp. The first query um, requires to compute uh, two uh, quantitative indicators, uh, exponential moving averages, or EMA 38 and 100, over windows of five minutes. The EMA of X on a window WI is defined recursively as a function that takes uh, the last price in the current window, the previous EMA, the one in the previous window, and the value X. So for each symbol, we need the EMA of the previous window to compute the next one. Then query two uh, requires to uh, emit a buy or a sell advice when one of the two indicators, one of the two EMAs, overtakes the other one. So the platform we use to solve the problem is NOIR. We designed and developed NOIR to study the trade-off between ease of use and absolute performance in distributed data processing. In distributed data processing, there is a tension between performance and code complexity. Writing custom code uh, using low-level primitives may bring significant benefits in terms of performance. For example, and you can see here in the graph, uh, using custom MPI code, allows developers to optimize the code for the specific problem at hand, uh, but requires manual handling of uh, synchronization, deployment, communication, so it's much more complex. On the other hand, um, there are data processing platforms that offer simplified programming and execution models to increase productivity. However, uh, they may come at the expense of absolute performance with respect to custom code. Using Apache Flink, we measured up to uh, more than one order of magnitude lower performance in some scenarios with respect to optimized MPI programs. So Noir aims to investigate the modeling, design, implementation choices between behind uh, uh, distributed data processing platforms and their effects on the trade-off between complexity and performance. The final goal uh, is to improve the performance of today's data processing platforms with little or no other complexity for the developer. Noir builds on a data flow model uh, where a computation is expressed as a sequence of functional transformations. In the figure, arrows represent data and circles are operators that transform input data into output data. At runtime, each operator is instantiated multiple times so that different instances can process independent partitions of the input data set in parallel. For instance, the figure shows three uh, concrete instances for each operator, A1, A2, and A3 are three instances of A. Developers define how operators process individual data elements, and then the platform automates deployment and communication. Operators are deployed within threads uh, that compete for CPU resources within each machine. They communicate using in-memory channels uh, within one machine and TCP channels uh, across machines. The model uh, is suitable for both bounded uh, datasets, so for batch processing, and unbounded datasets, what is typically called stream processing. While most existing platforms uh, run on a Java virtual machine, uh, Noir is implemented in Rust, a compiled language that provides a high level of abstraction at low cost. Um, let me mention some aspects that contribute to the expressivity and performance of Noir. Um, generic and static dispatch. In Rust, developers can express data structures and functions that are generic over one or more types. For instance, all uh, noir operators consume and produce a generic stream of P, which represents a bounded or unbounded data set of a generic type P. This construct is implemented at no cost in Rust, uh, which adopts uh, static dispatch. The compiler, that means that the compiler generates a separate version of each generic uh, structure or function for each type in the program. And invocations to generic functions are translated into direct calls to the correct version. Memory management. Uh, Rust provides automatic uh, and safe the allocation of memory without any overhead of a garbage collection. Threads and, and serialization. 
traits um, represent a collection of functionalities, which in some cases may be automatically derived. Noir uses traits um, to automatically derive efficient serialization and deserialization code for user-defined data, resulting in efficient code with no additional effort for the programmer. Overall, as a result, developers are provided a high-level API that simplifies the definition of data processing tasks. Uh, it includes, to mention just a few operators, stateful operators, windows, split and joins, uh, uh, and iterations, including nesting iterations. Now, here is the architecture of our solution of the uh, DevSgram challenge in Noir. First, we have a gRPC component that uh, receives and forwards data to the evaluation platform using the gRPC protocol. Um, it receives batches of events. Each batch contains events. Uh, there were 10,000 events in the challenge and a list of subscriptions. The subscriptions are symbols for which the evaluation platform expects some results uh, for that batch. Next, the flat map uh, operator unboxes events and subscriptions from batches. The group by operators partitions them by symbol, so the next rich flat map operator can compute the actual results in parallel for different symbols. The rich prefix here in the name indicates that uh, the operator is stateful. It stores the information needed to compute the next exponential moving average for each symbol. Upon receiving a subscription, the rich flat map sends its results to a collector that forwards the result back to the gRPC component and back to the evaluation platform. Notice that all the components here expect, the, uh, with the exception of the um, gRPC component, were already present in the standard library of Noir. And the gRPC component itself can be reused. So actually, we noticed that the gRPC communication um, may easily become a bottleneck, so we carefully engineered it. Um, we open parallel connections and we receive multiple batches in parallel. So we make sure that there are always new uh, data, new batches to feed into the next operators of Noir. The number of parallel connections uh, balances uh, throughput and latency. So increasing the number of parallel connections accumulates input batches and increases the overall throughput, but it may come uh, with an increased latency because batches need to wait before the previous ones are completed. Finally, we implemented an optional uh, smart visualization tool by storing uh, the indicators into Redis with the time series model and loading them into a Grafana dashboard. Here is an example of a screenshot. And now some results. Uh, these are taken from the Grand Challenge Evaluation Platform without the optional visualization module. On the left, uh, we have the total execution time to process the entire data set which indicates uh, the throughput of the system. How long does it take to process the data set? On the right, uh, we have the average latency uh, to process each batch. On the x-axis here, we, have, uh, we change the parallelism, meaning the number of operators uh, that process symbols in parallel. So the rich flat map operators, if you remember uh, the graph from the previous slides. From the graphs, uh, we notice that the parallelism here does not affect the results. And this indicates that something else, not the processing of the queries, is the bottleneck in the evaluation platform. And indeed, here we show uh, how the results change with the number of gRPC uh, connections between Noir and the evaluation platform. Uh, the execution time decreases, meaning a higher throughput, up until four parallel connections, and then it stabilizes. At this point, we are receiving exactly 2.5 gigabit per second worth of data. So we suspect that the limit is in the network interface of the evaluation platform, which is limited to 2.5 gigabits per second. The latency increases with the number of parallel connections as expected. For the challenge, uh, we selected four parallel connections as a good trade-off between throughput and latency. Finally, uh, to test the scalability without the bottleneck of the network, we conducted uh, additional experiments by, by move, uh, loading the entire data set in RAM, so avoiding the bottleneck of network communication, and um, extending the indicators by including more computational expensive ones with respect to the one required by the DevScan challenge. So this shows how easy uh, it is to extend the platform with different sources 
So uh, read from RAM rather than uh, read from gRPC. So different sources and different operators because we implemented new indicators. Um, so these graphs show how the execution time uh, changes with the parallelism uh, on uh, an Amazon EC2 instances uh, with 16 virtual cores on the left and on an um, ARM M1 Max laptop with 10 cores on the right. In both cases, we notice that uh, Noir scales in this case significantly when moving from a parallelism of one to a parallelism of four, and then at a certain point it flattens out. Uh, but that happens when we achieve a maximum throughput of over 1,000 batches or 10 million events per second on Amazon EC2 and almost 20 million events per second on the laptop. So this concludes my presentation. Thanks a lot for listening. Uh, and I really be happy to meet you finally in person at Devs this year and take any questions. Thanks for watching.